Hi there, my name is Shella Ramanan. I'm a writer and narrative designer. And um, yeah, so welcome to this talk, which isn't going to be a how to get into games talk because largely because I only know how I got into games. I guess I know how, you know, some people I know got in as well. Um, but basically everybody's journey into games is different. Um, so I don't think if I sort of laid out like a 12 step road, road plan for getting into games based on how I got um, to where I am and um, maybe a couple of people I knew, I don't think it would be that helpful because um, you might have very different support structures in terms of family and finances. Um, you might live in a completely different area than I did and have different opportunities. There are just so many things, so many um, elements that um, affect your journey and impact it in positive and negative ways. And um, so, yeah, unfortunately, you have to kind of find your own way. So, um, so I decided not to do a roadmap, <laughs> how to get in um, talk, but I, I am going to tell you a little bit about my journey um, because um, just to add context to me and who I am, and also you might be able to find some parallels. Um, uh, but mainly I'm going to talk about my journey because it includes the things that I've done, um, how I got to where I am, and um, most importantly, the lessons that I learned along the way. Um, and hopefully those lessons um, will be able to apply to you in some way. I think they are quite broad and should, should be able to um, resonate um, regardless of discipline. So let's give it a go. Um, so my name, as I said, is Shala Ramanan. I am a narrative designer on the writing team for Avatar Frontiers of Pandora at Ubisoft Massive in Malmö in Sweden. And um, it's kind of a gloomy Friday morning <laughs> here in Sweden today. Um, uh, prior to that, I was a video games journalist. I had a long career um, as a journalist and freelance writer. Um, and in that role, I spoke at a lot of events. I was um, an industry commentator, I suppose you'd say. Um, I host panels, so um, events at BAFTA, the Victoria and Albert Museum, um, stuff for the BBC, broadcast um, media, and um, writing a few articles for The Guardian. Um, and then in 2016, I started making games. Um, I always wrote fiction on the side and um, I did a writing for games, um, sort of workshop retreat thing. And it kind of changed the whole course of my career because I thought I could, I was like, oh, there's this uh, writing fiction and my knowledge about games and I can sort of blend these together. And so I, in 2016, I um, focused on writing for games and um, signed up to a game jam. And then I made the full transition to uh, say goodbye to journalism forever. Um, and uh, I joined Massive in July 2019 and um, moved to Sweden, which was exciting and terrifying in equal measure. But it's been a really great move for me. I am also co-founder of Pock in Play, which is an organisation founded to improve the representation and visibility of people of colour, both in games and in the games industry itself. So um, we are on Twitter um, at Pock in Play. We also have a website and um, we have a Discord community. So if um, you are BIPOC and um, want to engage with um, uh, 
people who look like you in the games industry, um, then head on over to our website and you can sign up for the for the Discord and um, chat to us on Twitter. Um, so, uh, what have I done before? <laughs> How did I get here? Uh, so, yeah, the fir my first game was a game called Before I Forget, which is a narrative exploration game about an Indian woman with dementia. And um, so in 2016, like I said, I signed up for a game jam after I'd been to that writing retreat. And um, that is where I met Claire Morwood, who um, would go on to become my co-developer on three, four, on um, before I forget, and also the co-founder of our micro game studio called Threefold Games, which is based in the UK. Um, so yeah, we met at this game jam, um, and that was where Before I Forget was born. And um, we won the Audience Choice Award at that event, which was the um, which meant it was the game that people most wanted to see finished. And um, yeah, and so then we decided to carry on with it and spent the next four years um, working on it, evenings and weekends. It was majority unfunded for, for the majority of the development um, period. Um, apart from we got some humble funding um, around the last nine months, which kind of got us over the finishing line and allowed us to add exciting stuff like voice acting, which was really cool. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then we launched, released the game in 2020 and it was nominated for a BAFTA in the category Games Beyond Entertainment. Um, the year after it was released on Switch and Xbox. So um, yeah, that was a really exciting and um, successful and well-received debut game. And um, yeah, so that's uh, the main thing that I'm known for, I think. Um, I am currently working on another narrative game called Windrush Tales and uh, that's in pre-production um, and that is about the Windrush generation which is a period of immigration from the Caribbean to the UK for, between 1948 and 1971 and um, it's a personal project for me and for the majority of the team who are all Black British Caribbean and um, are all either children or grandchildren of Windrush, um, the Windrush generation. So um, that's a watch this space kind of project. Um, I've also done sort of editing work for um, other indie developers and comic book writers. And I did a little bit of work for us two games um, on the game Assemble with Care. Um, I, um, did some writing on a vertical slice there. So um, yeah, that's pretty much um, life before massive. Um, and yes, at the opposite end of the spectrum, both in terms of budget and scale and just about everything, um, is Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, which is my current project at Massive, so you can look on the Massive website to check out the beautiful, beautiful trailer and look forward to that one. Um, so yeah, I am a narrative designer on the writing team. So um, just talking about the previous games that I worked on, so um, those freelance projects, the little bitty jobs I did, like us two and um, the indie developers and so on. Um, those were kind of uh, purely writing roles. So um, yeah, the editing, the words and um, and just writing. Um, at Threefold Games, I'm the narrative designer and writer. Um, so, um, and all the other hats that you have to wear as an indie developer, especially a studio as small as ours with only two people. Um, so yeah, in that capacity, I do sort of the PR and marketing, like look after. There's all sorts of stuff that um, you have to do on top, but 
prim my primary uh, role is um, narrative designer and writer. Anna Massif, that is my, my role too. So what does that actually mean? Um, why are there two, uh, two titles instead of one and how are they different? So uh, as a writer um, in games, uh, you are focused on the characters and their journey through the game and the story setting. Um, but uh, writers also, it's not just about writing the dialogue that the, the characters say. Um, there's lots of writing that you do before you would get anywhere near dialogue. So um, we will write everything from character bios to um, quest design documents where you outline the plan for the, for the quest um, and um, backstory for um, all sorts of elements if you're working in a world that has lots of lore or um, you know like I am on Avatar or um, you know any sort of um, uh, sort of uh, IP that has canon as associated with it then you'll do lots of writing around that and um, yeah so but primarily focused on characters and their journey through the world and the setting of the game. And narrative design is a more holistic view of story in that it is focused on the player experience, so the journey of the player and what the player is feeling, um, because that can be different from what the player character is feeling. Um, that's something that we learnt and um, examined in Before I Forget. Um, it's also about how is the story being told? Um, so which of the um, toys that you have available to you within the game and type of game you're making, um, which of those are you going to use to um, design the most compelling story beat um, uh, you know, which gameplay elements are you going to, like gameplay and storytelling elements are you going to employ to ensure that you're always telling the most engaging or giving the player the most engaging experience. Um, and uh, so the, the main goal is to ensure that um, gameplay and story support each other, so, 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 so the game design and um, uh, the, so, the pacing, all sorts of um, elements uh, work together um, to ensure that um, the, the gameplay supports the settings, themes and character motivations and also um, in that happens in reverse that um, the, the characters and the story is also supporting the goals of, of the game um, for the player and for the best player experience. So that in a nutshell is kind of what I do. And so now on to the lessons that I have learned. Um, so this is lesson number one. Um, so the first lesson is collaboration is key. Um, so, yeah, I think about um, making a game. Making games is hard. People say that all the time, but it is. It's really hard. And it's hard because it takes so many people. I mean, unless you're like the Lucas Pope of the next generation of game designers and you seem to be able to do um, everything um, by yourself. And um, yeah, like kudos to people who can do that. But in general, games take um, a lot of people, even a small game like Before I Forget, um, you know, we pulled in people with different expertise, um, like uh, composer, audio designer, um, you know, we had a voice actor, director, um, and uh, a 2D artist, you know, so we had to pull together a team. And uh, it's like a barn raising, basically, all these people are working towards this one goal and um, to do this really big difficult thing and everybody has to know what their role is and make sure everything's in place at the right time for this thing to be able to sort of get up off the ground and not collapse under its own weight. Um, so that is um, why collaboration is so important and one of the key things about collaboration is 
um, be a nice person to work with. Um, I think uh, we tend to put um, sort of tr tr problematic people on pedestals in the games industry um, and you know the the toxic genius um, I think it's a narrative that needs to go away and I think we can celebrate people who are uh, extremely talented but also um, nice people to work with who um, support their team instead of making things difficult for them and um, produce great work um, with people. Um, so yeah, that's one of my key lessons is be nice, a nice person to work with because if people like working with you, they'll re recommend you to other people and um, they'll try to work with you again because um, you uh, sort of enrich the team and the environment and um, yeah don't cause undue stress or um, difficulties and um, part of that is um, part of being a nice person isn't isn't just about you know being a smiley face or something it's about understanding how your work impacts other teams so um, you know like as a writer um, you know working on the narrative team the narrative touches so many other teams on a project so it could be like um, you know that great that really cool scene that we've thought of does the animation team have budget for that um, if it's going to be a cinematic and um, uh, have we communicated um, the dependencies to the audio team on this specific thing um, you know can we even make that um, so it's about sort of understanding the pressures and needs of other teams being okay with compromising sometimes um, you'll have to meet some sort of middle ground so that everybody can um, achieve their goals on different teams and um, sometimes you won't agree with that that decision and um, you'll kind of mourn the loss of some something that you really cared about but ultimately um, everyone's trying to just get this really difficult thing done and make it the best they can so you kind of at some point have to accept and um, keep moving forward um, and then also uh, be happy to share ideas um, and to take someone else's ideas um, you know to let other people shine um, and you know if you see someone is like bringing something that's maybe counter to your idea but is really fantastic um, part of collaboration is letting that person shine and being like you know what that's a really good idea let's go with that lesson number two um, so uh, bring yourself to what you do um, yeah so this is about um, like finding those passions that you have within you so i guess if you um if you wanted to make your own projects this is a way of you to stand out from the crowd um you know because you are unique you all are unique you have uh unique backgrounds and interests and um when it comes to finding out what those passions are and things that you can bring to the project i think think beyond your passion within games it's like you know that's a given and we're probably going to intersect a lot on um, the games that we're passionate about unless you have some really niche obscure uh, corner of games that you're interested in and, in, in, and okay cool uh, run with that but I think uh, think beyond games like um, like for instance, you know, me with Windrush Tales, um, I am a child of Windrush and um, I don't see myself um, that background or heritage represented hardly anywhere, never mind in games. Um, you know, we're the first game of, to, um, to cover that um, period of history and it comes from a personal space so uh, the whole team has personal connection to it and that makes that game unique um, 
And so it could be, it doesn't have to be that personal, but it could be like, I don't know, you like, you're really into loom weaving from, I don't know, medieval Belgium or something. Um, I'm just making up like niche hobbies now. Um, and, and I don't know, you can like bring aspects of that, whether it's like the mechanics of it into some other aspect of the game or the, the way the mathematics of weaving or um, there are all sorts of things that I probably can't even fathom in other disciplines what can influence the way you think and approach your work um, but yeah so um, that's for like when you want to forge that unique identity as a um, as a, an indie developer um, but uh, joining AAA, I think there tends to be this kind of sense of binary um, that you're either indie or you're AAA and then that's it and, um, you know, you can defect from one side to the other. But the, it's, uh, the games industry isn't really like that, you know, people's careers change and, um, you know, uh, you know the, the, their need, the needs uh, from their career change, whether it's from you know, I want security or I want to get a certain uh, number of big projects on my CV or whatever it might be. And then it's like, oh, I'm secure enough now. I can um, try and do my own stuff um, or the other way around, like me, like my entry point was making my own stuff. And then um, that got me to AAA. And um, I found that working in both indie and AAA that um, yeah, okay, so I don't have the freedom to like go off and make a, you know, in, inject a story about the Windrush generation in, um, in you know, an avatar game. Um, but, you know, there are ways that you can let your passions inform your creative decisions, um, whether it's me as a writer, um, you know, like characters I write and bringing in things I'm interested in and themes that I'm interested in. And then, um, you know, I could see that with like artists and musicians can bring in things that they're really interested in that are relevant to the project, but, you know, they have this unique um, aspect that they're bringing and um, you know I'm sure uh, in other disciplines there's a multitude of ways that you can do that um, that I don't know about that may or may not include um, medieval Belgian loom weaving I don't know but um, I find that it's a really important way to stay engaged and passionate about the project and um, you know uh, it helps and it just um, gives you that personal touch and um, that's why you're in the team like the team is full of unique individuals who each bring bring something um, so yeah so make sure that um, you don't leave that there's other passions behind um, uh, yeah so bring a little bit of yourself to what you do card lesson number three um yeah so this lesson is show people what you're making um so this was a lesson i learned really early in before when uh before i forget at the game jam you know we won the 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 people's choice award and um i'm 99 sure claire and i would have gone Oh, it was really nice to meet you. This was fun. Cool. Bye. Uh, see you sometime. Um, if we hadn't won that award and realized that people really engaged with um, this prototype we'd made, this really rough prototype we'd made in like 36 hours. And so we were like, maybe we can carry on and see where this goes. Um, and yeah, so it was to, I mean, we couldn't help but show it to people there because it was at a game jam and it was getting judged. Um, but um, yeah, it just shows how vital. And we found that along the entire journey of the game was that um, you know that when we took it, the, the demo to shows and we got that feedback from people, or when we took it to the games hub or just showed it to a friend, um, just showing people your work um, is a way of like it can reinvigorate you and give you energy and it can give you direction as well because sometimes you'll see that people aren't responding to something that you thought they would and then you can fix that um yeah and then uh within 
company projects that aren't your own, um, uh, just remember NDAs are real. So if you have a non-disclosure um, agreement, don't break that. <laughs> uh, this isn't uh, carte blanche to break NDA, but within your project, you can still sort of like engage with um, team members from other disciplines maybe and don't be afraid to show your ideas um i know it makes you vulnerable and like what if they don't like it but what if they do like it what if they love it um so yeah and if they don't like it you can learn something from that too so um show people your stuff they might love it and this is my final lesson um this talk for a little bit longer than i planned but yeah lesson number four is build community um, so I know that the games industry can feel really cliquey um, you know there are like the cool people that we um, put on pedestals and you know you sort of watch them talk to each other at events and things like that and um, you know on the whole you can probably go and talk to them and um, they'll be very receptive to um, to talk to you but it can be intimidating and I get that and um, and then there can be you know they might live in San Francisco and um, you live in Wolverhampton um, so the likelihood of you being able to have like a casual uh, sort of like engagement with someone at an event um, is unlikely in that respect you know other than being like can you jump on a call with me um, which is uh, difficult to ask because it is intimidating but my lesson is that um, well a uh, despite the fact that it feels unapproachable or cliquey um, before I forget would not have got where it was where it is without enormous support from um, people in the games industry game other game devs um, indies and uh, and people you know working at big companies as well um, people were just endlessly generous with their time and their knowledge and um, just supporting us and um, yeah it was just like uh, yeah there's so many people to thank her um, for before I forget and keeping us going and encouraging us and helping us find funding and all sorts of things. Um, so that's one thing. And also um, you can build your own community. It's quite easy to do that. Um, if you just find like-minded people, I mean, you're all sort of, you're all graduates graduating together. So um, if you don't have a, a, a games dev hub in your town or something. Um, I used to run a, a role playing group and I wanted to, I was making before I forget, uh, I didn't want to go up to Bristol to go to the games hub, but I wanted some sort of feedback. And I also like, there were sort of games adjacent um, people at the role playing group. And I thought, well, maybe, um, and I knew that they mucked around with things sometimes. And so I was like, you know, if I um, created like a, a game dev thing around my dining table would anybody be interested in about like five or five people or something were like yeah it'd be really cool so yeah all you need is like some snacks a table <laughs> to sit around and some powerpoints to plug in your stuff some people were making card games or like text adventures or just mucking around with like a physics um set up in unity and I could share my game and yeah, you can do game jams together, um, but you are there sharing ideas, seeing what other people are doing, which will like sort of feed you and motivate you. It also, it also gives you, um, what's that word? Accountability. It gives you accountability because you know that you have to show up to the dining table, not just with snacks, but hopefully with some bit of game that you've made or developed. Um, so yeah, so um, build community um, and remember that the, the cool kids that you're looking at now, um, well actually you're the cool kids um, because you're the ones that are gonna come and like bring this breath of fresh air and you know, you've lived through sort of momentous period of you come through <laughs> the other side of a pandemic for heaven's sake and um, you've got like fresh ideas and fresh perspectives and um, 
we're all really excited to see what it is that you're going to do. So um, we're going to want to be hanging out with you, really, <laughs> as opposed to the other way around. So, um, yeah, build community, be kind to each other, support each other and good luck. And uh, that's the end of the talk. And it's like, it looks like the sun might be almost coming out in Sweden. Um, but anyway, my DMs are open on Twitter. I'm at Shana Ramanan. So feel free to come and say hi. Or if you see me at an event, I'm at AdventureX um, this year in November. I'm not sure when this uh, talk goes out. Um, but yeah, feel free to come say hi and good luck. <laughs>